Hello Value Investors, thank you for joining me. Today I want to talk about Zscaler and whether there's a misalignment between investors' expectations and its revenue growth rates. So if you're new to the channel, please subscribe now so you can get my next value installment. Also, don't forget to check out my marketplace on Seeking Alpha. It's called Deep Value Returns and I'll tell you which stocks I own and why. We have a balanced argument for the stocks I own. So let's get started. So right here you can see that in the period of fiscal 17 to fiscal 19 over these three years, Zscaler was kind of coming around 50%, 50, high 50% revenue growth rates. Then for fiscal 20, the revenue growth rate has slowed down to 40%. So on the one hand, in the period that it should be booming, that it should be seeing very strong revenue growth rates as we have migrated towards a work from home environment and the demand for a secure platform increases, we're not really seeing a proportional boom here. So I'm thinking about next year, I'm looking out to fiscal 21 and I'm just considering whether it could really sustain even a 40% growth rate over the next year, this kind of, that really depends. If, if the growth rate comes around 40, 42%, then okay, investors may for a little while longer justify paying what they're paying. If it kind of trickles down even a little bit, investors may come to think in a different manner about Zscaler. On the other hand, I have to say that when we were looking at Q1 and Q2, the, the the buildings here. This is a forward indicator of the company. It's, it's 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 contracts that have been booked in, but the revenue has not yet been recognized. So it was starting to tail off this metric. You can see it was thirty seven percent and eighteen percent. So it was already below the revenue growth rate. And many investors would have been very rational and said, okay, the 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 pipeline coming in is not so strong. It's already tailing off. So the multiple might not be relevant to pay such a high multiple north of let's say 25 times forward sales for a company that the buildings are coming down but then came the shocker so in q3 the, the, the buildings really jumped up so on the one hand the revenue growth rate as we discussed is coming down but the pipeline is looking really strong so it's kind of complicates the image slightly can't really it's not clear cut for either the bulls or for the bears. Now, I'm a value investor, so for me, ultimately, it's not only about revenue growth rate. I really have to think about what could be downstream profitability for the company. Now, you can see that in this period, over the last two years, really, its operating margins, its non-gap operating margins, have hovered around 10%. So, although, it starts off looking more promising that it could, the operating margins could improve. Can you see here it went from negative four and it started to improve. It has stabilized around this number. For now, many investors will give this company the benefit of the doubt. As long as they're putting out strong revenue growth rates, many investors will be willing to turn a blind eye to its operating margins. However, we should say that non-gap operating margins is really putting back the stock based compensation. As a SaaS company, the bulk of the cost is really the stock based compensation. So as executives look to exercise their options, particularly as the share price continues to increase, they're going to be even more incentivized to exercise those options. So as they exercise those options, the market cap is going to increase further. So it's really important to consider non-GAAP operating margin as well as GAAP operating margins that add back the stock-based compensation. So it's a complicated thing because if you look here, although non-GAAP came up at 8%, the GAAP was negative 18%. So it's, 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 it's a complicated picture and I mean it's difficult to, to make the argument that paying such a large multiple for Zscaler is justified because here we can see that in 2019, the fiscal 19, okay, so investors were paying on a trailing metric 18 times sales. 
So when COVID came around and many companies needed to rapidly migrate towards working from home, the multiple just boomed. It just went to 38 times trailing sales. So I'm just thinking, so analysts are thinking like this, okay? So analysts are thinking that looking out to, to next year, that it may tail off to as low as 30, 30%. Now, this is probably like too low and the, the, will give the company some, some, some ability to outperform here and the guidance comes out next quarter. And if the guidance look better than this, you know, they may continue to justify the multiple that investors are paying for, Z, for Zscaler. Having said that, I mean, it's kind of complicated to think of any optimism that is not already priced in as 38 times sales, trailing sales. I mean, even if you think about it going out to next year and then you're kind of looking at possibly 25 to 27 times forward sales to this number here, these are not earnings. This is just, this is uh, largely a gut unprofitable company and paying 25 times forward sales is like, it's, it's kind of doesn't leave a lot of, a lot of upside. It's there is a lot of boom in the sector and the space is in high demand but it, it the thing of that scale it's not it doesn't it doesn't it's not sufficient for a company and enterprise to 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 work by itself you need a lot of other plugins on the side because it doesn't really fit every single eventuality you may need some other end to end encryptions so it's it's kind of like it's difficult to, to say that you, that all companies will need to go through Zscale and therefore the multiple that investors are paying is justified. Let me give you a different example. If you look at something like Microsoft, that's a tall bridge. I've said that before in my channel and a lot of enterprises need to go through some sort of product from Microsoft. That, that you can, you know, any multiple is pretty much justified there. With, with that scale, it's not the same case. So investors are tripping over themselves for what will be kind of like, it's just difficult to say that paying 525 times forward sales for a company like this is justified. So obviously for now, it doesn't really matter because everything that matters right now is revenue growth rate and momentum. And there's so much momentum in this stock. So for now, I don't think that the investors are going to pay too much attention to my warning signs, but I've, it's just difficult to say that this is not a speculation in my opinion. Um, this is just my opinion, of course. And um, if you'd like to know which stocks I own and why, come over to my marketplace on deep value returns on Seeking Alpha. Hope you found this video useful. See you soon. Bye.